uh, Helen McCourt and the Accord Centre campaign. Yeah. Hip, hip, hooray. 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 Okay. Well done, guys. And I know that they, they've won some money from the Scottish Government to pursue looking into a, a new centre, so I think that, that's a significant achievement. That's a significant achievement. <laughs> okay, and in terms of our other award, Luke Devlin and Equally Green, which is a new project to try and win jobs for poor communities uh, uh, within renewables and to use methods of community organising to, to achieve that. So I, I think that's, that's a good thing. And it's, we had this first meeting just last month, um, it was well attended, and discussions are beginning with Skills Development Scotland and with a number of other organisations to pursue that. So, again, hip hip hooray. Okay, and I'd like to invite Ian McInnes to the stage to discuss. Discuss. <laughs> okay. Good news. Tell us some good news. Tell you some good news, folks. You know, I've been quite happy sitting there, but... I'm sure I'm stuck on it, so never mind. Um, yeah, it's a wee bit of good news. Um, in the Scottish Tennis Organisation has been, uh, among others, uh, a wee bit of recognition for our activities in Western Berkshire. And I'll just read you this press release and uh, then I'll explain a wee bit of background to it. The committee of the Western Berkshire campaign against stock transfer um, met on the 21st of June to digest the news that Western Banshire Council has scrapped the stock transfer proposal which we warmly welcome. This is the right decision for council tenants, council workers and the wider community in Western Banshire. The committee believe their campaign played a part of the decision to scrap this unwanted stock transfer and want to thank thousands of tenants and residents who supported the campaign over the last three years. Uh, the council trade unions played a key role in the successful campaign and have to be congratulated. The main lessons to be learned from this successful campaign is that the whole community united and fought together uh, for that just cause and uh, the campaign committee was made aware uh, of and wished to thank tenants, trade unions, owners, um, some of the councillors, that's the ones that were sympathetic, and the Scottish Tenants Organisation. There will be a huge ongoing attacks on public services in the coming year and uh, the the campaign plans to take a rest and, and uh, rejuvenate itself to call for um, investment in public sector housing and to campaign uh, on the issue of housing benefit and other thematic proposals to cut. So that is the good news. <coughs> There's another wee fight that might need to happen and that is that um, um, in today's, I think it was today's, today's or yesterday's Guardian and our Observer, um, it's, it's been brought to our attention that housing benefits for under 25 could be scrapped. So the Prime Minister is to announce this shortly. Um, and um, <coughs> a cutting from a previous time was that. Uh, the headline on that one was that 50% cut in a full day housing budget as the SNP government manifesto turns to rubble. That was in the, in the run up to the recent local government elections. Um, now, it's interesting, we've got a debate going on at the present time about um, further devolution or independence or whatever for Scotland. And I've got two or three people here who and obviously of that bent, being in the SNP. Um, and there are people out with the SNP who either uh, also want independence or, um, or don't. But at the same time, there's a lot of people who want to ask questions 
about the ongoing situation, especially relating to cutbacks. In, uh, in a recent poll, one of the main things that concerned people was the cutbacks. This was a poll carried out discussing um, the whole question about independence. Um, now, on the one hand, the SNP at the moment, <coughs> being a majority in the Scottish Parliament, have been carrying out lots of cuts, but at the same time blaming those cuts on, uh, on Westminster and saying that if we had independence, the implication is we wouldn't have those cuts. Can so, you give us a for, for instance there? Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear in, your for instance in, on it. In terms of cuts? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in terms, in terms mm -hmm. of cuts, there's been quite a lot of cuts to, um, to further education and in terms of the people going to do hires and other courses at places like Annie's Lang College, Langside College, places like that, Cardinals and so on, in the west of Scotland. So, what about the Western Barton scenario? Yeah, Can you give us a bit of context? That. Let's go back to the good news. Yeah, but yes, he's please. He's quoting cuts when they don't actually exist, and I'd like to know where your facts come from. All oh, right, right, right. <coughs> Can we maybe get back to that once you've we've yeah, dealt with okay, the success okay, stories? Okay, all, all, all I'm saying is, in relation to the discussion about cuts, is that uh, there, uh, there's, there's a lot to debate there, <coughs> and a lot of people who do want an independent Scotland, want to know what an independent Scotland would mean. But um, also how they shape it themselves would be my comment, but let's yeah. keep with your story. Anyway, we'll go back to, the, back to the rest of Bartonshire. And the situation in Western Bartonshire um, is that, uh, or was, that uh, there was a proposal, first of all, and uh, this is where the Twiddle D and Twiddle Dum, that comes on, I would say, Labour or SNP, you can both be a bit dodgy at times. But anyway... Would be your opinion. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that uh, Labour were in the ascendancy in the council there, and at one point they were for stock transfer <coughs> of five, over 5,000 houses, which is roughly half the stock in the area. Um, and the, uh, and the SNP were critical of them. And then the SNP got into the ascendancy. It was only, only a very slight majority in both cases when the swing went either way. And then the SNP decided that they were going to um, go down a similar path. So then, the, so then Labour said they were against it. And uh, obviously there was no point of principle here. Uh, because Labour seemed to just be against it because they didn't like the particular proposal and the, some aspects of the way it was made up. But in terms of the people involved in the campaign, it wasn't a case of parties, it was a case that they did not want um, their housing going to a halfway to privatisation situation, which is how, how the, the Scottish Tenants Organisation and how many tenants groups view stock transfer to uh, a newly created housing association or for their houses to be taken over by an existing housing association. Um, anyway, over the period, the two main groupings of tenants and, and, and owners to some extent, two organisations combined with uh, a group of uh, shop stewards and conveners uh, from the trade union movement and, um, and supportive individuals, plus uh, the Scottish Tenants Organisation from time to time uh, lent support in, in numbers to help with distribution of leaflets and so on. And um, the, the basic thing is that uh, possibly it's connected to this, the current austerity climate, that, uh, that, that the money just ceased to be there and it would become rather obvious that if they carried on with their proposal it, it could possibly look really bad and of course there are other elections coming up and uh, it probably wouldn't look too good in that regard for any of the parties and um, it had been pointed out to uh, leading people in the Scottish government 
that in 2008, I mentioned the Observer earlier on, it was in the Observer uh, and uh, various other leading newspapers that the that um, both Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon had said that they would stop the onslaught on council housing and uh, that they would be recognised in, in the future as being a, a, a tenancy, a tenure of choice and that uh, and it would be and it would be funded and more council houses would be built. And they have been true to their word in the sense that a lot more council houses have been built since the SNP uh, um, came to power in, uh, in the Scottish Parliament. Um, however, from our standpoint, not nearly enough. We need tens of thousands. We don't just need a couple of thousand. And, um, so anyway, I just want to wind up by saying that uh, that uh, more power to the to local campaigns elbows and uh, we don't go in direct campaigns, we support campaigns and try and get people to combine and uh, we're glad of our involvement in that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and in terms of uh, during the election, obviously one of the things that we were looking to see was action on the private renter sector to see better regulation and stronger regulation uh, and more enforcement. You pressed press my button on that one. Yeah. Right. Um, in terms of the private rented sector, I, I, I stay in the south side of Glasgow and uh, a number of us have been trying to gather evidence and campaign around the issue of both HMOs and the private rented sector in general because it's pretty chaotic. What's an HMO? Uh, how is there multiple occupants? Okay, thank you. It's, oh, it's a no, no, you're quite right to ask that. Because um, I can't stand people that use abbreviations and other oh, people don't know. They can be confusing. And I've just done it. So, okay. <laughs> but I've corrected myself. I want it then. But um, mm -hmm. the, the thing is that uh, across the city, there have been a number of people who have been campaigning specifically on the houses of multiple occupancy issue, particularly in the West End uh, and, um, and increasingly in the South Side in the last uh, five or six years. Um, and I know it affects other parts of the city too, so I don't want to leave anybody out. <laughs> but um, one thing that uh, another campaign that's been happening recently because of the the aggressive nature of the private rented sector um, in relation to uh, its use of um, letting agents and their, their general way of carrying out their work. I think they are now, uh, a, there is a situation where they quite often charge um, various fees that are currently illegal mm -hmm. and have been illegal for decades and have been doing this. But of course, um, another criticism of all governments currently and in, in the past is that they all talk about what a great role the private rented sector is carrying out in supplying housing. Um, now, I, I would question that. I don't think it's a case of rogue landlords. It's a case of are we going towards what, in the worst sense of the word, the French would call a rentier society where it's the people who are doing the renting that claim the name of rentiers in the society. Because they are running the show. And who's behind them? The banks again. But there is campaigning against the fact that these landlords have got together to lobby the Scottish Government to make these illegal fees made legal. In other words, people are already paying, and then on top of that, they're, always, they're often asked to pay other other uh, other fees for all kinds of things, just an administration fee, a here's your key fee, or whatever it happens to be. And know? what is the Scottish legal perspective on that? There must be one. Well, the legal, but there is, no, there is not a Scottish legal. Well, Scottish legal perspective it currently must is that these. It, Scots law yeah, somewhere. Cur currently, it's the situation is that these fees are illegal. Right. And uh, a number, a number of tenants and potential tenants. Um, have have 
I've got, I've got a challenge that says, right, we're going to spot their court. Presumably. They don't even need to go to court most of the time because, they back they're, they're off. because they back off because they know what they're the, doing is illegal. So the, the point of part of the campaigning, presumably, is to empower more people to use the legislation that's in place so, well, the for their yeah. Yeah. fairness and safety? or Well, partly, but the, the main point of the campaigning is to ensure that they do not get away with... Um, turning what are currently illegal fees into legal ones. Legal ones. Um, yeah. And uh, the more publicity we make about this... Are they in any danger of succeeding in that? Well, I, I, I hope not. Okay. I, 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 not I, I, I'm very, very, very hopeful. I, 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 can't, I, I can't say, you know, 100% that, that they won't I'm win that concession. But I would... Pretty sure it won't I, I, I feel... Yeah, More than fifty percent that it will not happen. Okay. There's a lot of campaign going on. It's like a, it's like a face of freckles across Scotland. There is a lot of campaign going on in this issue. But there's a bit of positive news on this mm. in terms of Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of focus on this during the election, um, particularly because, as a result of the demolition of, okay. of social housing in the city, more and more people. Are been pushed into the private rental sector yeah. and it, it's badly regulated. Um, and that person's charged. Well, you posted yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah. That, that started to happen. And uh, until recently, anyway, Glasgow had two enforcement officers for the whole of the city, and Edinburgh has nine, so that gives you an indication. Yeah. Well, they've but, got a chance to worry about it as well. So. Yeah, but the, the, um, there's, a, there's to be a commission. Yes, yeah, so this is the one from uh, Gordon Matheson has, uh, has initiated this. It's a, it's a commission on uh, factoring. Um, currently, I'm trying to find out what what the actual remit is on this, because so far, uh, okay. most of the people who are on the committee, the board, whatever it is to be called of this commission, um, are mostly from the landlord side. Yeah. They're, so, but the, the people who are living in the houses are tenants. I take it Sanders uh, in very, uh, in very many cases. The publicity put out by the by Glasgow City Council for this commission says that you know so many residents see something like seventy percent of uh, tenemental properties and all this sort of thing. Well, I think he's got that wrong for a start. A lot, a lot of these uh, tenements actually house, um, for the most part, tenants, tenants of owners who own two or three properties, or tenants of landlords who own lots of properties. Um, and what we really need is a, a proper investigation to find out who owns what and have it properly publicised. At the moment, there is, there is legislation which is be treated as voluntary, it's been made compulsory uh, in terms of trying to get all landlords to be registered. And uh, at the present time, there has been an increase in the number of landlords registered. But Surely being, the HMRC must have a note of that, yeah. they must have. Um, I think the, the, the problem with it is that even if they're all registered, there is not made available, publicly available, the list of these landlords who are registered. Now, uh, of course, first of all, being registered only means that you're registered. It doesn't mean that you're complying with anything except registration. However, uh, backtracking slightly on this point about the, about the gathering of evidence for independent bodies to gather evidence, life is made a little bit difficult. Because if you want to find out if a particular property is registered to a landlord, then you go to you go to your local council website, go to the appropriate part of that large website, and uh, you type in the address. And if it comes up that this is that this has been registered, then it'll tell you. And if it hasn't, it won't. So if you want to find out about an area, you're going to have to do that and several thousand times. Um, whereas it should, in my opinion, be available, freely available. The list for, a, for, a, for, a, for yeah. the city of Glasgow yeah. should be available for Edinburgh, for whatever local authority area or a rural area. It should all be available. 
I think 10 years um, later, you're not going to get a good picture. Exactly. So, 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 we, so we need to, uh, as the lady said, get, get a clear picture oh, yeah, of what the situation is. The dear women come in. Depending on which way you're viewing yeah, it. Absolutely. But, um, so that is, something, oh, that is something that is being worked on yeah, currently. And, uh, because it's needed. Because <laughs> it's very difficult to campaign adequately about an issue if you don't have the facts, and the mm. facts are being denied. Okay. So, but a bit of transparency and clarity is needed there. Yeah. When, when, okay, when so... do you want to know your reply? <laughs> well, <laughs> Liz... <laughs> no, it's just I could put that as a question to the National Conference. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, that's this month, isn't it? Yes, no, no, the National Conference isn't until October. Oh, that would be great. I was thinking of the... Yeah. But it can be phased and passed and yes, take yeah. problems on motion and as it's so probably very much Let's recognise the fact that although that there's a lot of backstory there, yeah. two qualified, albeit qualified successes. Yeah. Yeah. First off, yeah, a campaign that's ran for six years or more just down the road in Clyde Bank, so on has, has won. And I think that's that's a, a great success. Yeah. And secondly, the focus on the, the unregulated nature of the private rent sector has led to a commission that's been formed which is going to look into the issue. Now again, no, both those are qualified successes, but nonetheless there's an opportunity there to improve the situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of discussion at that point mm -hmm. and <laughs> I'd like to maybe have a wee break so that we can continue the discussion for yeah. five minutes or so before we sure. move on to the next part of the meeting. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. Yeah,